Hey guys, Saf here with another Ray Shadow Legends video. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at another blessing. And this one today is going to be the Soul Reap blessing. This one would have got a lot of attention almost immediately when released because it did sound like the number one MVP insane crazy blessing for a damage dealing champion. Not so much a defense-based damage dealing champion because there isn't a blessing for a defense-based damage dealer, but generally good for dealing damage. So we're going to have a look at the blessing. I'm going to go into detail with some of the details that are not really explained in the description. That is very important for certain aspects of the game. We're going to do a bit of a play test in Hydra, taking a look at how it works there. And then we're just going to test in some dungeons as well. So what do we have with Soul Reap? When this champion hits an enemy target and decreases their HP to a certain threshold, a Reaper will appear and deal extra damage equal to the target's remaining HP. For AoE attacks, each target that has their HP reduced to the threshold in the attack will be visited by a Reaper. The Reaper will ignore defense as well as all damage reduction skills, effects and buffs. So it's really been designed as an execute. If I get you to a specific target threshold, you die. That's the concept of this blessing. It also has a high awakening bonus. This cut kicks in at five and six star. If the target survives, has a chance of placing true fear for one turn, this debuff cannot be resisted or blocked. Now to note here, fearsome presence mastery will increase the chance at five star. That will make it 55%. Sniper will not. Sniper does not affect control debuffs, but it's kind of mute because once you hit six star, if you ever hit six star, you don't really need it. And the 5% is quite a low chance. I wouldn't necessarily be indexed and into fearsome presence. If I want to deal damage, I'm in the offense tree. In terms of stats, we get damage based stats, which is great. We get 500 attack, 25% crit damage, and at 6 out of 6, 10 speed. It's exactly what you would want for a damage dealing champion. So yeah, it's a strong, powerful blessing. It is legendary, only available to legendary champions. The thing to note is it does have a cooldown. So whilst it works AoE, you have to work around the cooldown. So if you're attacking four enemies, if two enemies hit the threshold, they will both be hit by the Reaper at the same time. But if you then consequently get the third champion down the next turn, you won't get a Reaper out until the cooldown has expired within the blessing. You need to run that through. That's the important note here. So what I want to do now is just jump into the specific details around this blessing, looking at how it's coded in the game, because there is important factors here that haven't been equated things that need to be clarified. As it mentions, Soul Reap ignores 100% defense. Nothing suspicious about that. Targets must, however, have more than 0% and less than 20% to proc this effect. It doesn't require the champion who wears Soul Reap to push the enemy into that threshold. If they attack a target, that target is in the matching HP thresholds for the awakening level. Soul Reap activates as long as there's no cooldown. It's as simple as that. It doesn't, you know, it, it alludes in the description that you have to push the champion into the HP banding. You don't. The other thing to note here is you can't run this and expect it to continuously proc on a killed clan boss. So if you get the clan boss to defeated state, then it technically doesn't have any HP left. So therefore Soul Reap cannot proc. There is a window between 19% and sort of 1% HP on the clan boss where this could proc. So if you're going for like a world record, then it's a potential that you can do it there. Um, however, it's very difficult to sustain that. And obviously Brimstone is probably a more valuable blessing in that setting. It is considered fixed damage. That means you cannot grow it. You cannot reduce it. You cannot do anything with it. It's fixed to the amount that you deal and it doesn't count as a hit. So it shouldn't count towards the sort of head of wrath counter. And I don't think it'll count towards finite shield either. It cannot also critically hit. So crit damage in itself is worthless for this blessing. Now onto something that is not explained in the description, which is actually quite important. It ignores strength and buff, and it also ignores a damage multiplication effects. So that is things that reduce damage. A good example would be Duchess passive or Candreform passive when he is veiled. It will ignore that, but only if it's on a champion. If you are targeting a boss, the only effect it ignores is strengthen. So if a boss has some sort of mechanic that reduces incoming damage, Soul Reap will get reduced by that on bosses. This is particularly important when we are going to be testing in Hydra. So what does that mean? The multiplier for Soul Reap then is one times the target's current HP. It is an execution. So if I'm fighting in the arena, I get the champion to 20% HP. I will execute that champion. 
except if they've got unkillable and block damage. It cannot ignore the unkillable effects, but it will then hopefully place true fear. As long as there's no block debuffs, it's designed to kind of, you know, if you don't die, I'm going to stop you from being able to take a turn. It's not foolproof. Fear is 50-50. You've also got to uh, hope that there is no block debuffs out. But if they get to that HP threshold, the idea is they will die and they will die in arena because you're against champions. It is coded as an AOE ability, not a random, not a single target. This is how it is able to hit multiple targets at the same time. That's important when we pair it with the fact that bosses that reduce incoming damage, that is not ignored and it is also an AOE ability. Anyone who knows Hydra in detail will probably see where I'm going with this. The other thing to note is it obviously doesn't block revive. So there's nothing that stops another person reviving someone who was killed by Soul Reap. So the first thing I want to do is go and test in uh, some dungeons. We're going to go hit dragon and we're going to see how it works. The idea here is basically we should be able to run straight through to the boss. And once it hits that sort of 14% marker, because I've got a five star cantra here, we should instantly execute the boss. Now at 14%, it's actually quite a low target in reality. The amount of damage that Seer can do, for example, or other champions, other enemy max HP, you could easily sort of exceed that number. So we're at stage 20 here just to make sure that this team can get there. It's not a fully spared team. Most of it is. And we're going to see now we're going to do a fair chunk of damage. We're going to do lots of enemy max HP. Seer is probably going to rip a number into this boss. And we're going to see if Cantra is able to attack the Soul Reap and see how much damage it does. It should fully execute the dragon. The dragon itself doesn't have any passives that reduce incoming damage, so we shouldn't have any issues there. There goes the Soul Reap, execute, 356,000. So if you get a six star champion and you're using him in dungeons a lot, for example, if my Ghostborn was six out of six, he would definitely be a Soul Reap champion because it's just gonna speed it up. He doesn't really benefit from any of the blessings outside of cruelty and it will just help speed the, the whole battle up. We'll get there 20% quicker. Now this should work as the same strategy in Ice Golem, which also doesn't have a damage reduction passive. Once you hit the 20% mark, it should just die. Although you're probably running some sort of poison team there, like a, a Frozen Banshee, a Bad L, a Tomb Lord. It should run in spiders as well, and it should also run in finite. However, it will not work through the shield. The shield is a damage reduction effect. Now, the main area where this is actually really a problem is Hydra. And the reason this is a problem is all of the Hydra heads have a passive, decreases the damage all Hydra heads take from AOE attacks by 10%. I think the Head of Suffering also has 30%, and it is multiplicative. So as we mentioned, the Soul Reap is an AOE ability, and it's also not ignoring these damage multiplication effects. As a result, instead of executing Hydra heads, we get quite a substantial amount of damage reduction, especially when there's a suffering head out. So let's just run this test now and let's see that in action. Again, the concept is once you get to 14%, the heads should die. The good thing about Soul Reap, you don't need any stats in your build to make the damage any stronger. I could have it on Cantra here, who is basically built with no damage. She is built for Bommel. She's built in high resist, high accuracy. It doesn't require her to be built in damage. She'll do exactly the same amount of damage here as if I had it on Constantine, who is built full glass cannon nuke. So we are getting closer now to the het threshold. Okay, so here is the test. Now it will still ignore 100% defense, so no decreased defense isn't a problem, but you will see that the damage reduction doesn't execute this target. It should kill it. It doesn't. We get 51,000. Because what it is doing is it's taking the remaining HP and it's multiplying it by 10%, 10%, 10%, and 10%. So we're getting lots of damage reduction here. So it ends up not being that strong for Hydra, unfortunately. Even though it sounds pretty strong, you want to kill that head, get into the decapitation mode. You can't really do that. So I've got my Cantra built in no damage, as I said. She is built for Bommel, high resist, high accuracy, very fast, 226, I say very fast, reasonably fast, no crit rate, and then obviously she must have crit damage gloves on just for the speed, I would imagine. She is in, in Giant Slayer. So she is built like you would build any support style champion in Hydra, Warmaster for healing or for doing extra damage. Not a lot of damage in there. You're not doing any max HP. And she kind of, with Solry, comes out the same strength as someone like Nekmothar, someone like um, 
a Lydia. She doesn't really do an awful lot more damage because it is quite a niche scenario to be able to get yourself into that 14% range to execute that head. Now it is somewhat handy if you've got a consumed head to do a lot of bulk damage, but because of the passives, it ends up being quite weak. And it's a shame because actually the blessing that you would normally think to pick, which is Brimstone, is also not very good in Hydra. And that is because you're provoking the Decay head, which means he's not using his active abilities. The Wrath and the Torment head only has one active ability. The, the Wrath one is on a four turn cooldown. The Mischief head will not use his active ability unless he's stolen a buff. So you end up in the situation where not many heads actually use active abilities and to activate brimstone you need active abilities so you really are looking for a single target champion to place that brimstone on the right head which would be the suffering head because even the, the the sort of poison cloud head he doesn't like using the a2 if you've got a good block debuffs and a cleansing team he won't use that a2 because he's looking to use it when there are poisons out there or to apply poisons so I was hoping Soul Reap would be a better alternative and it doesn't really add an awful lot of value, unfortunately. Now, in terms of other things in Hydra, obviously there probably isn't much else. Cruelty would probably be better for Cantra here just to help decrease the defense. But otherwise, we're probably not looking at much benefit here other than Brimstone or Soul Reap. So it's a good alternative. In terms of where it sits in the DPS charts, a lot of people are preferring Lightning Cage at low awakening specifically. It's pretty strong if you can get Soul Reap up to 5 or 6, you get a good HP range. But at 4%, Soul Reap is very, it's, it's almost worthless here, 4%. It's so little that you're not going to see the impact. Whereas Lightning Cage gives you exactly the same benefits as stats, but at rank 1, you get a 50% chance to protect your buffs. So I am seeing a lot of people pick this over Soul Reap. It may change if they get a higher Awakening, but generally speaking, it's either Lightning Cage or Soul Reap that is being chosen. So there you go, guys. That is Soul Reap in detail. The thing we need to note is obviously it's different for bosses. So if you're using it in Hydra, that is why you're not killing heads like you are in other areas. So long as the boss doesn't have a damage multiplication effect, you should be good to go with it. If you've been enjoying these Blessing Spotlights, please give our channel a subscribe. The next ones will be coming straight into your feed. And please give this video a thumbs up if the content has been helpful for you. I am releasing daily videos now on various different topics. We have some champion guides coming up. We are doing more blessing spotlights. I'll be doing a spotlight on every single one of them, even the worst ones in the game. But until then, I will catch you in the next video.